Excitement in the kitchen. Say, let's see the excitement. All right. Just you come along with me and I'll show it to you. Welcome to The Appliance Show. I'm Jonathan, The Appliance Dude here at Curdles in Westchester County. Happy holidays to you all. Um, today we're gonna rip it and we're gonna rip it quick. This is my initial review of the new Alfresco grill, the ALXE grill series. Yes, that was just released late this past summer. I bought one. It wasn't given to me, I bought one. I got it about a week and a half ago. Um, first couple days, to be honest with you, I didn't cook on it. Why? The thing was so beautiful, the fit and finish was so incredible. I was literally just admiring and taking pictures, okay, of this grill. Cooking on my Memphis, cooking on my Kamada, one of my five other grills, and literally just hanging out with a beer and admiring what the Alfresco looked like. <clears throat> Do I have a problem? Possibly. But um, uh, this grill is absolutely the presence. Let's talk about presence magnificent um the fit and the finish and you can glean that by going to a, a an appliance showroom um the the presence the fit and the finish of the grill really unparalleled in the high-end premium grill business i think the only once a couple of people have mentioned to me that they thought the kalamazoo was on par as far as the fit and the finish the kalamazoo was also 16 to twenty thousand dollars um alfresco falls for below that price point. Um, so fit and the finish, unbelievable, but one buys a grill to cook on it, okay? Not just to sit there in your yard and look at it. So I did start to cook this weekend. The first cook, I uh, um, started off very simple with chicken burgers then kicked into uh, you know doing my ribeyes, prime meat ribeyes from Minis in Bronxville. And what I did with the ribeye is we did searing for two minutes on the side on the infrared burner, which completely just cranked so hot and then brought it over to the standard uh, part of the grill for finishing off, and we temper it 10 minutes, then we devour it. Um, so here's my take initially, and this is by no means a comprehensive review of the Alfresco grill, this is just my first take. Okay, the pros, and I'm, this is the cool thing about listening to me guys, is because since I bought it, I'm not beholden to Alfresco or to my distributor to blow smoke up their proverbial asses. I can do whatever I, I'll say what I want, when I want, and that's just the way I roll. Um, so here, here are the pros, okay? The fit and finish, as I said, it's just gorgeous, okay? There are no burrs, there are no um, nasty edges, uh, the, thing, the handles, everything is just clean. You can see, that if you look at some of these high-end grills, if you really look closely, you can see some imperfections in them. Um, messy soldering or welding jobs, stuff like that. This thing is just absolutely beautiful the way it was put together. Kudos to Alfresco. Um, other positives, extremely powerful. Um, the infrared burner got to over a thousand degrees in a matter of minutes, not 10 minutes, a matter of minutes, so much that it tilted my infrared gun. What I mean by that is when you used to play pinball back in the day, if you did, when you get a really high score, you would tilt the pinball machine and it would actually reset back to zero, okay? Um, I actually tilted my infrared gun. The burner got so hot, it couldn't even register the temperature anymore. The thing just went bang. It went from 999 degrees down to just, it just said high, which means that it would actually have gone past a thousand degrees. So the infrared burner is ripping hot. Um, uh, the, uh, and there were no flare-ups on the infrared burner either. Um, the, uh, what else did I love about this grill? The lights, the lights are fantastic. You know, I, on my DCS, I don't have lights on it. Um, and I didn't know what I was missing because Alfresco not only has lights in the canopy, um, it has lights behind the knobs as well, which, you know, the, the, you know, they kind of helped. They look cool. I'll say that much. It's, an, it's kind of like an amber light scheme, so um, it looks nice. Um, I still couldn't really read the lettering on the knobs, but um, um, I also, the knobs themselves actually, this is worth talking about. They're using uh, nickel now as opposed to this other type of, I don't even know what the old Alfresco model was uh, using, but this is far more substantial. They just feel, just feels like it's a better made grill all around. And it's actually much, much nicer looking than the ALX2 series, which quite honestly, I thought was an ugly looking grill. Um, uh, the ALX C series, they've totally bumped it up from a design standpoint. Uh, the aesthetics are mm, there. So 
Um, what else did I love? The canopy. I mean, not that I've ever really had a problem with opening and closing the canopy, but some people, especially a lot of the female grillers out there, will you know they'll be like, ah, you know, um, the, the, you know the 42 inch. The canopies are kind of heavy unless you do a links with the spring assist. Well, um, the, the the lid they actually change. It's one of the major changes with the ALXE grill from Alfresco is that they did something to the canopy so it actually opens much easier. Now here's what I didn't like about it so far. Um, first of all, uh, the, the, the way the knobs are actually uh, laid out on the control panel, they, it, it's kind of illogical. You would expect the knob to be directly underneath it to control it, not that you have to go to the other side of the grill. So that I'm going to have to ask them why they did that, because that hasn't changed uh, from the ALX2 series, and I just find it to be illogical. Um, I also found another issue with the knobs was that there's not much play. Um, one of my knobs is very, very, very difficult to turn and between high and minimum, there's no other settings really in between, not much of, of, of play there. So you don't really know where you are temperature wise. Um, I actually think DCS did a better job where they actually have a kind of like an arrow or like an indentation in the knob to let you know exactly where you are. You're either on low, you're on medium, you're on high, or you're on sear. With the Alfresco, there's no real um, way to understand where you are as far as with the knob. And again, the degree of turning between, media, between minimum and high is, is, is very small. So. Maybe I'm just bitching about a small little detail, but I'm just laying, uh, laying it on to you as to what my first impression was. Um, flare-ups, I did get flare-ups. I did get flare-ups um, on the first cook, especially with the ribeye, and then we put a ribeye, um, we put a skirt steak on with a mar teriyaki marinade. Now what I'll say is, but I didn't get uncontrolled crazy flare-ups. I got, um, they were more than a flame kiss, which we like because um, that's flavoring the food. There were some sustained flare-ups, but you know what? I just moved the meat around and things finally, you know, they extinguished. So their system of having the briquettes, the ceramic briquettes laid out in a grid um, over the flame, which is something I'm not used to because I'm used to open flame cooking nowadays in my Kamado and my Memphis grill. Um, uh, this takes a little bit of getting used to, but um, it's actually very good for flare-up suppression. So, uh, so that's kind of a good thing that I'm bringing up under the bad thing category, whatever. Well, the lighting does not illuminate. The lighting above the knobs, which is a big addition to this grill, does not illuminate um, uh, the lettering on the knob. So I was kind of like, you know, looking down, trying to peer in closely, it was nighttime, as to where am I as far as am I on mid, am I on high? Um, so the lighting, I think, is basically done for aesthetics and the functionality of it's kind of whatever. Um, um, so that's basically it. Yeah, that's based off one cook. So I, there's so many things I can do with this thing. I mean, I got the steamer fryer um, accessory. I got the hard fuel insert or the solid fuel insert, which is going to allow me to cook with charcoal, with wood, um, like the Kalamazoo. So I'm going to start playing with those things, and I'll talk about them here. But but the, the, you know, the first certainly the first uh, cook went really really well, aside from the tight knob and uh, you know the lighting of the knob being a little you know whatever, and the layout on the knobs. Hey, a lot of the, I guess that's what I'm getting at. I don't like the way the knobs are. The knobs look beautiful and feel great, but just there's some other issues I have with them. Um, so that's basically it. Is it worth the money? I'd say hell yeah. I mean, I find that, again, that this will hold its own against any premium grill brand, and they're more flexible, more versatile, and they have more accessories to put together an outdoor kitchen if you're going to go beyond just doing a grill. So um, that's it. That's the quick and dirty take. Um, not as quick as I wanted it to be, but um, please hit me up with any questions about Alfresco. Um, email me, Jonathan at Curtis.com, call me or come in and just look. There's just going to be a stream of videos as I cook with this thing, and we're going to be cooking all winter on it, okay? So um, that's about it. Thank you for your time. Any questions, hit me up. Thank you.